Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzzweaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. It is a bit of a departure from what is typically covered here on the channel, although each Friday we do have the Friday Vlogs, and I want to welcome all you guys here. And if you haven't already, I would encourage you, if you're here on YouTube, there is a channel icon right here in the bottom right-hand corner. You can click on to subscribe. But if you are following on DTube or BitChute, of course, you see the follow and subscribe buttons for those particular social media platforms, and I would appreciate your participation there as well. This week in gaming news was a bit of a sober one as the events that are unfolding right now in our country. We will be getting into that here in the next segment. So the much anticipated 1.22 update that we were waiting for out of Infinity Ward has been canceled as a result of the current climate we are currently in at the moment. And guys, I just want to remind you that I did release a video, the typical community news update, which you can check out up here in the top right hand corner. That kind of just goes over some of the things that uh, the game released last week and what we were kind of anticipating for this week. But nonetheless, it will review some of the things uh, from last week and into this week. But of course, things have changed as a result of the current climate. So I just want to let you guys know, but you can check out that video up there in the top right hand corner. It may be fair to say that most everyone clearly understands that what happened to George Floyd was tragic and egregious and that it is not necessarily reflective of all police officers or even emergency services that are here in our country that serve the community each and every day. It is understandable that individuals were outraged, most everyone is very disturbed and troubled by what happened. However, it is important to note here that it is not necessarily reflective of all police officers or emergency service personnel who respond to things each and every day who try to help the community. I just want to make sure that that was clear here because as I go over this, I'm going to kind of just focus on certain things. You guys have seen a lot of images. You guys have seen a lot of or heard of a lot of the reports that are coming out. So this isn't a new topic that I'm covering here that you guys perhaps have not heard about or the types of uh, events that have happened even here in our city of Atlanta in the state of Georgia. So the thing that I want to talk about here is I have no particular issues with groups of people going to their city halls, obtaining their permits to demonstrate and allowing the cities to properly prepare for these particular people's demonstrations. As we saw here in Atlanta, groups of peaceful protesters did get their permit. They were right outside of Centennial Olympic Park, which is across the street from CNN. It's not too far from the campuses of Georgia Tech. It's not too far from some of the prestigious uh, universities, black colleges here in Atlanta, Clark, Morehouse, and Spelman. So I don't know how many of the students are actually uh, in the universities right now, of course, because we are technically still in the pandemic shelter in place stages, which makes things even more interesting. And we'll go into that momentarily. But a lot of the demonstration or demonstrators and or uh, peaceful protesters that we saw were younger people, many of them students and so forth. So it's understandable that within that area that there would be, you know, these individuals coming together. And of course, we know that people have been under this shelter in place for two and a half months now. People are ready to get out. There's, you know, tension. There is levels of concern. There's levels of anxiety within society right now stemming from the pandemic. And now we have this particular incident that is very shocking and very troubling. Lots of people are watching the news. Lots of people are, are just uh, on edge in some instances and in some cases. Now, what I want to talk about and discuss in particular are some of the aspects and elements to what we have seen. Now, we have covered rallies and conventions and other protests here on the channel for the last two years. I have covered rallies and conventions uh, in the years past and have seen the types of activities, the, the types of counter protesters as well as protesters. And in this particular scenario, in this particular situation, we're seeing things that are a little different, a little unusual, kind of expanded upon it. Now, the approach that I have seen that seems a little unusual 
is you may have noticed that sometimes the media does not necessarily identify this as a riot. And in some instances, in some cases, it is simply protesters. The police are acting against protesters or they're identified as protesters. And that's because we have seen a lot of these journalists actually being attacked by these individuals. So they want to quell the language. They want to control the language so as not to attract attention. Now, I don't know if that stems from the fact that the protesters or, or I should say the rioters themselves who attacked CNN and uh, sprayed graffiti all over CNN, but that was just part of it. They actually um, ignited one of those mortar uh, fireworks that are incredibly dangerous inside the CNN center. They broke the glass. Police officers are there trying to protect or uh, trying to stave off these individuals from going into the CNN center itself. But they set off one of these mortar um, fireworks, which is very dangerous. So we're seeing an escalation that we don't typically see. Now, we do see individuals like, or groups of individuals like Antifa and others who kind of start and antagonize these types of environments. But the levels that we're seeing now are quite extreme. And as I mentioned, the media did not necessarily go uh, describe this as riots. The other things that we're seeing that is equally as troubling is a lot more fires. But it's one thing to set buildings and property on fire, but what we're seeing is these individuals are actually blocking uh, emergency vehicles from getting to these areas, which is something unique. Now, it's not unusual to see protesters blocking traffic, but blocking emergency vehicles is something a little different. Now, here in Atlanta, I did see that individuals were trying to block the road. That is not unusual. But the fact that they would block then emergency vehicles from perhaps responding to individuals who are injured, individuals who are hurt, those types of things is kind of troubling and different. Another thing that we're seeing and that is being investigated is that there seems to be strategically placed bricks at certain areas within certain cities. This has been kind of an anomaly. You guys may have heard about a little bit or heard a little bit about it. There's a very, very, very uh, viral video. I think it was may have been on TikTok, but it is viral everywhere of the young black man and another individual. And he's pointing out that these that there are a stack of bricks at this particular city hall or government facility that have just been left there. And he mentions how this looks like a setup. Now, it's not unusual for particular organized groups to have these kind of caches put away. They'll have certain things like uh, fuels, which is very dangerous, of course. That's another thing that was added and different, as well as even kind of water stations. And we even see a video of an individual handing another person money saying, get whatever it is that you need. Now, of course, that can be interpreted however you want to interpret it. The individual is wearing all black, very indicative of Antifa. But again, we can't just simply label everyone simply because of the way they're dressed or, or their behavior. But these have been things that we have noticed as commentators. These are things that we have noticed as individuals who cover these types of activities, how things are shifting and are a little different. Now, we already know, for example, that the media has a particular narrative and a particular drive in a particular direction. Of course, this will have levels of uh, politics involved in it because it is now getting to a point where governors of these particular cities, the National Guard, police, and others are needing to take action to make sure that these things happen. And of course, we saw that the president did come out the other day and talk about um, the activities, the riots, and so forth. And there were kind of two different interpretations of this. The president came out. He wanted to show a sense of strength, a sense of leadership by saying, look, uh, I'm going to leave it to the governors to handle this. Those who can't, then I'll have to take measures to ensure that peace, law, and order is maintained. Now, by definition, our government was designed to do three things. That was to create law, enforce law, and protect the country from enemies foreign and domestic. So when the president says, I'm a law, a law and order president, he is essentially just outlining his job. So it wasn't as though he was making some sort of inflammatory or divisive statement. He was essentially outlining what it is that is his job, and that is to maintain peace, order, and law in our country. So the media suggesting that this had some level of uh, division in it or, or that it was uh, inflammatory 
is not accurate as a misrepresentation. And we have seen them do this misrepresentation. It was also suggested that his walk, which is kind of symbolic of Abraham Lincoln walking from the White House to St. John's Church, which he would do often. So it was kind of this walk that he did was kind of symbolic to demonstrate that um, we can still function as a government, that he can still go from the White House to St. John's to show that the St. John's Cathedral is still there, although it was uh, set aflame and, of course, damaged, but it is still there. Of course, there is all of the talk about him holding the Bible and so forth and so on. But all of this was symbolic of him trying to demonstrate at least levels of strength and levels of calm, that things will be maintained and there will be order. And, of course, the narrative from the media has been entirely and totally different. So, the curious thing here is how things are culminating as we just described, how things are developing. Because about this time last year, we talked about the rise of the activity between Antifa and of course um, the uh, Proud Boys that we saw in, in, in Oregon. You might, rec might recall that where we were kind of seeing you know, the boiling points of how far it would develop. But thankfully, nothing really culminated from that. Then we saw the president come out and say that uh, he was going to label Antifa as a terrorist group. Now, I want to just kind of revisit what I just said there with the president saying that uh, he was going to bring out the military. Now, at some of these protests, uh, oftentimes you'll hear them say, posse comitatus, posse comitatus, or they'll shout it out and they'll just say it. Posse comitatus is an act that was passed in 1878 by Rutherford B. Hayes, which essentially says that the federal government cannot use the military to enforce domestic law. So this was kind of mentioned. I saw uh, uh, someone they were interviewing on CNN mention Posse Comitatus. This was not unusual. I, I, I would kind of would expect CNN to cover this. But at the same time, there's also the Insurrection Act of 1807. And what's kind of interesting about Posse Comitatus is that it was passed in June June 18th of 1878, and we are in June now. But nonetheless, of course, things change, things are modified, these types of policies and laws can change, particularly under emergency or declarations of emergency acts by the presidents or even by governors and even by executive action. So this is bringing a lot of very interesting components to these particular demonstrations that are turning into riot, but there must be law and order and even some of the polls that have been taken, even by some of the media who has their narrative driven ideologies and philosophies, that people are willing to allow the president to take action because we see, we have seen it. And I, I know I didn't talk about it, guys, because you have seen all the things that have happened with business owners and, and, and things that have been going on with uh, stores and, and people defending their property. And unfortunately, people have lost their lives in the process of defending the property or looters going in and being shot or the owners being shot themselves. And we, we understand the disturbances. We understand the outrage. We understand the difficulties and complexities of this because of what has happened. And, and because we see a group of individuals who feel marginalized, who feel alienated, who feel uh, uh, removed from certain societal capabilities or institutions and so forth and feel as though the institution may be against them. This is understandable. I worked in this field for several years and in the last two years I worked in criminal law with a law firm and in criminal law with the state. So I saw all right, guys, so in that last segment, part of it may have timed out because the, the camera had stopped. It, it goes to a certain point and then stops. But um, I pretty much believe that I was able to cover uh, what was necessary and what I wanted to make a point about. But I will leave links to uh, what I covered in that last segment below the video. But I also wanted to mention that uh, this week I received a daily devotional from Pastor Bryant right here in Atlanta that had something very poignant in it that I think is important to share with you guys. And that is that he said, racism is stemmed in pride. And I would agree with him 100% on that, that human beings within our nature, of course, have certain levels of self-aggrandizing, self-importance, because we want to be heard. We, we want to feel as though what we do has meaning, what we do has purpose, and that we're contributing to society. And we are kind of in a very me culture right now particularly in elements of social media. Now, I'm not suggesting that every personality or every person who is in social media is engaging in this type of approval seeking, validation, or looking for levels of uh, attention by 
you know, posting things that are self-aggrandizing or trying to make themselves feel more relevant because I work in this industry as well, of course, and I promote a brand. But we can see that within social media, as we have talked about many times, that if someone has a phone, a laptop, a tablet, a computer, they can access the internet and espouse their ideology, their philosophies and worldviews. And we're seeing a lot of these particular ideas, a lot of these particular concepts being presented on social media. And these can be individuals who may not uh, fully grasp the concept of kindness and understanding and compassion and empathy towards other individuals as now they have a platform from which they can espouse their ideologies and their philosophies. Now, as we mentioned in the last segment, I have no problem with people who obtain a, a permit to peacefully demonstrate and exercise their First Amendment rights. Now, of course, we know as private platforms, they can um, uh, remove or, or kind of censor information that they feel they deem that crosses the line into free speech and other types of communication that could be disturbing, that incite, that defame, that insult, and, and just do things that are uh, even goes outside of what is legal to do. So it's understandable that certain platforms will take certain actions, and we've talked about what the president is going to introduce and some of the problems that platforms have. But when it comes to it, I think Bryant Wright really nailed it quite well when he said that racism is stem from pride. And I would have to agree with that because if we look at it from, say, for example, uh, the Christian perspective, one of the passages you guys may be familiar with in the Bible where Jesus asked, what is the greatest commandment when he's uh, presenting this to the Pharisees and the Sadducees? And they respond by saying to love their God with all their heart and with all their mind and with all their strength. And Jesus says that is correct. However, I have one more thing and that is that you love your neighbor as yourself. And what, we, what he's representing here, of course, is that we show respect and kindness, empathy and justice to our fellow man, that we are all equal. We are created all equal as our particular constitution and Bill of Rights also outline that we have inalienable rights, that people have intrinsic value, right? That human beings are human beings and we will fail, we will have our failings, we will have our weaknesses, and we will have our troubles and difficulties. A few years ago, I came across a organization on Facebook called the Be Kind Movement, or yeah, to be the Be Kind Movement. And I agree with their messaging. I agree with how they want to present and handle these sorts of difficulties, and that is by being kind. Be the change you want to be. And remember, you don't, have to, you don't have to like your neighbor. You don't have to be friends particularly with your neighbor or, or individuals that you work around or that you are around. At least have a level of respect and common space for these individuals to be who they are as human beings. You know, provided they aren't affecting your life, they aren't disturbing your daily routines, they aren't affecting your life. Let people be people. Be kind. Be kind to others and be understanding. Be the change that you want to see is what I would stress to people who are out there right now kind of doing these demonstrations or, or online and social media doing the demonstration. Be the change that you want to be. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog, a rather heavy topic. I hope I was able to communicate some ideas and some concepts to you just from uh, my particular perspective and what I've been able to see, what I've been able to analyze, what I've been able to research and look into. So I value and appreciate your guys' thoughts and comments. You're welcome to leave those below this video. You're welcome to share this video with others to share in the concepts and ideas that maybe I have presented here. I hopefully did not inject too much of my own particular bias within it because I've always admitted that I have a certain perspective that I like to share with you guys and always welcome your opinions and thoughts as well. So do that below this video. I would appreciate it. And if you haven't already, if you are on DTube and you are on BitChute, I would encourage you to give me a follow there. And of course, appearing right there on the screen, that would be the channel icon here for the channel that you guys can click on and subscribe, as well as notifications. That way you guys will know when there is content here on the channel, as well as the Friday vlog. Thank you guys so very much. I hope that you're all safe. And I will see you guys right there behind the camera next week.